Welcome back to the Act Analysis and Tips Writing Meters. And this time we're gonna talk about season two of Star Trek Discovery. I'm gonna talk about emotional gear change, I'm gonna talk about spatial relationship between actors, I'm gonna talk about environmental influences, and a lot more in a packed episode, so engage. And before I make it so, I had to say all that stuff. Uh, hi, my name is JD. If you're new to this channel, I do act analysis tips like these. I do animation analysis tips. I do animation lectures. I do rig reviews, proc reviews, feedback stuff, all kinds of stuff. You know, this is the pitch at the beginning. Browse around my channel. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it, hang around. Maybe you'll like it later. I don't know. But that is that. Let's go straight to the sequences. And the first sequence here is between Captain Pike and Michael Burnham here. And why? It's because of this. If you scrub forward, you can see here he touches this. Basically, he has been injured. And through all of this, he's basically asking her not to make a joke because he can't laugh. He does, she does it anyway. He's in pain and so on. And there's also a nice gesture here of, okay, sit down. It's like that kind of a limited gesture. And why am I showing you this? Because I like the idea of this, of putting your character within limitations. His limitations are if this expands the rib cage, he's in pain. Ugh. So for you, <laughs> that's the face. Oh, he's in pain. And I like that idea as a, as a basic setup for your shot. Your character could have a limitation like this. There could be an arm in a cast. There could be somewhere where they're stuck and they can't move. But I like the idea that you are limited physically or somehow in a different way so that you don't rely on your typical acting choices or movements. And maybe he has to be always leaning. I just like that as a general idea. And maybe think about that as you start your shot. Maybe everything's great. You got your lip sync, everything is normal, but maybe at some form of limitation, it could be a costume limitation, it could be a physical injury limitation, whatever it is, but that could give you a different way of approaching an acting scene. This one I want to talk about because of the spatial relationship. So Pike here shows her something that's going to be of concern. And her reaction is, uh, yeah, I can't do this. Let me take a step back. So mentally, she has a problem with this. She doesn't want to do this, but also visually, she is taking a step back, but she doesn't want to deal with it. She, it's just something she wants to avoid. Now, for you in your animation, uh, if you watch my <laughs> act analysis tips, that's something that I frequently talk about. If you have your characters, right? You get your two characters, and they have a specific distance between them. Is it important for the audience to see that the character is actually going to take a step away or maybe a step closer, it's whatever you want to do. But as always, I like this. I like that she does this, that when you have your scene that your characters aren't always stuck within the same distance, you know, maybe you don't want to animate them because, you know, IK legs are a pain to do, weight shifts and all that stuff. But think about the spatial relationship between the two characters. Is there something where there's a friendship, there are enemies, there's tension? Why would a character get closer or why in this case would a character take a step back. And I think that's an interesting thing to explore in your scene. So if you have something like this and they could be standing, right? They could be sitting at a table, whatever it is. But think about that. Is a character leaning? What's the purpose of that? Will the character at one point lean back? When that character leans back, is this character going to lean in? And because that character wants to still stay closer and so on. There are many ways, many reasons, many things you can do, but I would explore distance, right? Spatial relationship and distance between multiple characters. This one is more a bit of a postural pose thing. There's a bit of a conflict, a bit of a, you know, he's kind of like ooh, taking it back here by what she says. And what I want to show here is the moment right there. You realize, all right, this is a bit awkward. And it's this simple thing of head down, slightly hunched over, slightly embarrassed. You can see how everybody's reacting here, but it's also this. It's a small thing, but it's not a regular walk. You can see his hand Maybe his hand was sweaty. It's kind of like an embarrassed move or something. But even if you have just a simple walk where a character goes from A to B, why? What is the purpose of that walk? And what is the head state and the emotional state of the character? And a simple thing of not swinging in his arm and doing this just adds an extra little layer of, yeah, mm, that was embarrassing. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Just think about this. Whatever your pose is, are the arms out? Are they in? Is one here? Do they hold hands? Or, you know, it's the character holding his own hands when he's walking here. Why is this? So really think about every single pose, every gesture. Everything is going to tell the audience something about the character. This I thought was really cool where Spock is really challenging his sister. And you can see here just gets worse and worse and worse in terms of how he gets more and more upset. He's getting up now to be on the same level. He's all slightly tiring over her. And it escalates into a lot of accusations and shaming and all kinds of things. You can see here close-ups just gets more and more intense. 
And it continues on until she has an outburst of shut up. That's what she says. And it's probably hurtful. And right off the bat, watch her. This. I love this. Just that moment. And what I like about this is the immediate change. When you have an extreme emotion going, Rah! and then right away regretting it. It's like, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Maybe I didn't want to hurt my brother or you know, whatever characters you have in terms of relationships. But that for your lip sync, you might have in your lip sync this. You might have all the tension. You got obviously the words, the energies. It's all very explosive. But this right there, this is not in the audio. And this is maybe something for you to think about when you have lip sync that might go from whatever into an explosion so for some contrast which is always interesting but maybe you can do one more thing so you have the audio and it tells you i'm getting more upset and i'm yelling but now the audio is done this is you this is your creativity where you can now go and have <gasps> that moment of regret or shock or somewhere i didn't expect myself to say this right now i thought this was a really cool moment really great acting moment as well and actually staying within this sequence, as he gets really upset and for once loses control, and even he says he actually likes it, it's very taxing emotionally on Burnham. And you can see this here, where this is happening. Really tough on her. And at the same time, you can't hear it. There is a, uh, a voice saying, okay, well, you know, Burnham, we need you on the bridge. <laughs> it's not exactly the best timing. And even she has this moment of really right now, but because she is a professional in her field there. She goes, all right, reporting back to duty. And you can see how she changes. And then back to, let's get this going. And this goes back to what I said before, just a different example. You could have your lip sync, or maybe it just sounds, maybe it's someone crying, whatever it is. And after that, there's not that much you have audio wise, but now it's up to you to maybe do this. You can do all of that. And I know there will be some sound and some coughing or some whimpering or something. But if you go into this, maybe not or you find audio for the a side that's upset you know someone is crying or something but you have to make sure that it matches in terms of the room tone the, the ambient sound whatever but maybe this is a lip sync where someone is serious so maybe splice together two pieces and you have that way kind of an artificial emotional change but just acting wise and animation wise this would be interesting to do where you go from this this state of mind this kind of emotion to okay well let me do this I think this is interesting to animate and it doesn't have to be within one audio piece. So if you can, again, you can have A and you can have B and put them together, but just make sure that maybe there's no sound whatsoever except audio. So maybe in terms of the characters, maybe there's some crying and then there are words, but then put in an overlying ambient sound. Maybe there's, you know, whatever, birds outside in the park or ocean, you're at the beach, but some audio piece that will be the connection between the two. Hope that makes sense. And with this one, this is actually season three. I know this is weird. I'm talking about season two all the time here, but this is just one thing because I wanted to bring that in there. They are opening the doors and they're seeing this outside place. It's clearly cold and windy. And as they step out, watch what happens to her mainly here. Ready? And the wind kicks in. Ooh, it's kind of cold. Ooh, and she adjusts a little bit. And then this is something again that I rarely see in animation where you have, at least in terms of animation exercises, but even not that much in movies, you have an environment where they're clearly protected with theirs. You know, there's probably a heater in there somewhere, right? It's kind of somewhat warm. And you go from something warm to something cold. And that's already going to be a change of maybe your shoulders are relaxed. Maybe that's just kind of holding on to whatever bag you have. And then as it gets cold, you can see here, shoulder goes up. She has a slight adjustment in the hand. She's going to be more bundled up. That's kind of your you doing those moves at the same time explore the idea of in here there is no wind there's nothing and now as you go out the wind is hammering the characters and you can see this in the hair not that you have to animate hair but it could be interesting but it's just that change from this environment to the outside environment there's a physical influence by the wind there's a cold and all of that is going to affect your posture the move, maybe the wind is really strong that she has to lean or maybe maybe lean against the wind. You know, maybe she goes, whoa, and then has to lean against that and maybe take all of this and combine it with a lip sync, right? A lip sync assignment where your characters are talking. Maybe it's just one character. Maybe there are two characters. But I think that is a, a criminally underused setup for your scene. Just an environmental change where you go from somewhere where it's hot 
into something cold, cold into something hot, something that's, you know, shielded into something where there's a lot of wind. Could be just, you know, whipping rain that goes into your face and you have to cover your eyes like this. There's so many things you can do. So instead of imagine you're lip syncing and you're talking and that's all you're going to do, now you suddenly have winds. There could be icy wind, could be rain, could be really, you know, something really hot. But imagine now your character has to do this. Now your whole delivery is going to be different because you're going to have that. Maybe the character holds newspapers and the whole has to hold them over this because there's rain. But all of that, especially if it's one handed, that's going to force asymmetry because your one arm is going to do something else than the other instead of being symmetrical, which is a lot of, you know, a lot of pitfalls that uh, students fall into. And to me, this is just extra, almost free stuff. You put a character in an environment, that environment is going to influence your character. And maybe there's stuff happening in the environment and then your character is going to react to this. And maybe there's something where they have to change into something as they continue the scene. To me, these are all extra free elements that will make your shot different versus I'm going to take a character, plop them into an empty scene. Here's my lip sync dialogue and I'm going to now do my arm gestures, W poses, and then that's it. So to me, this is just not adding a character to a set and adding props just because let's just do that because I say whatever. To me, this, these are all extra elements that will force your character into a different pose. Those might be environmental influences that spark a new idea in terms of how you will do this. What if your character has to step out onto maybe ice? And now that delivery of your dialogue has that extra layer of, well, I got to walk around like this because it's slippery. And maybe in your audio, this is like pause and you use that pause to bring in a little slip and then talk again. I don't know, to me, this just opens up a whole world of new ideas and, and, and possibilities for your characters in terms of acting choices, movement, just all kinds of that to me just gets me excited. And this is why I'm always going to push for sets and props. And speaking of excited, if that excites you and you want me to help you with your awesome shots to make those shots even more awesome, you know the pitch. I have workshops, link in the description with all the information, you know the pitch there. So check it out. You can sign up at any time. You can start at any time. Everything is super flexible. So check it all out. If you have any questions, comment. I will help you if you have any questions. And that is that. Thank you for watching. As always, thank you for your patience to watch this till the very end. If you're still here, thank you so much. Maybe you like this enough to subscribe if you want to, or not, maybe watch another clip before you decide to subscribe. But that is it for me. Live long and prosper, and I will see you in my next upload.